Hello, hello. It has been a while, um, but I'm back today to talk about and explain um, an activity that we are going to do called Explain That GIF. While we have technology at our fingertips, we might as well use it. So um, today and right now, you are basically watching the introduction to Explain That GIF. All you're doing today is really watching this video and learning how this works. Um, before we actually get into, again, here's where the video will be. Before we actually get into what we're doing, let's go ahead and review some of the concepts of Newton's laws through GIFs so that this process becomes a little bit familiar for you. So inertia and Newton's first law, write that in there for us, um, first law of motion. So an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion until it's acted on by an outside force. You guys are pretty good at this. Um, inertia is basically an object's ability to resist change. It is why objects at rest don't want to start moving on their own. I have a little video of, or a gif of a hamster down here. Notice when the hamster stops running, the wheel still is moving. That's the inertia of the wheel. And he goes spinning as well. So things that stop things, things that stop objects in motion, friction. One thing that we cannot get out of in our world and in our current living situation is friction. We get really close when we start looking at ice. Ice is close to a frictionless surface, but it's not quite there yet. Um, so friction stops things. Air resistance, so things that are flying through the air, be that a baseball, a rocket, or an airplane, things that you've all read about. Um, air resistance stops things and slows things down as well. And then finally, physical barriers, things like the wall in this situation with the grass chest dummy, uh, your hand, things that get in the way of that object moving. And then the other one that we're going to use a lot is Newton's third law of motion. So for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So when I push this way with one hand and this way with another to give myself a high five, I have equal forces pushing back and forth. Same thing goes if I push against the wall, the wall is pushing back against me. Now, I am not strong enough to make any headway pushing through this wall, but I am also not having the wall let me go through it. It is pushing back on me, keeping me where I am. So, um, we can think of Newton's cradle. Every action, equal and opposite. We also have this gif here of this gentleman shooting a water bottle cannon. As the water is pushed out of the bottle, it is also pushing back, and that force actually pushes him over. Equal and opposite reaction. Forces are going to come in pairs. So let's take another look. So if every action has equal and opposite reactions, why does this girl go flying? These don't necessarily seem equal and opposite. This is actually where we start to dig into Newton's second law. This gentleman with uh, the gray stability ball or yoga ball, um, he's a lot bigger. He has more mass. So that means that this lighter weight girl is going to go flying uh, because she has less mass. She's less massive. So that force of that guy with the bigger ball coming at her and then pushing back, um, his force is stronger, which is the reason we see her flip a number of times on that wrestling mat. And then finally, why did this girl fail at getting hit when she's swinging to hit her brother in the head with that little bat? Um, Newton's third law. Equal and opposite reactions. She swings hard enough at this stationary object that does not want to be moved. And that bat bounces right back and hits her in the face. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely tried this with my little brother when we were kids. And I definitely got hit in the head. Little kids are fantastic at demonstrating Newton's laws of motion. Which brings us to what we're actually going to do. So tomorrow, you'll actually go through and do this of your own. I wanted to give you a day where we reviewed some of the concepts. And then you can obviously look through my example and know what you're going to do. And then tomorrow you'll actually do your own. If you'd like to work ahead, obviously you're welcome to, but you do not need to. So step number one is to choose a GIF or a GIF. Um, I'm going to call it a GIF. We're just going to stop with that right there. You can search on Google, um, putting GIF at the end of it, or searching a website like Giphy. I have it linked here. You can click on it. It'll open it up. And then to add them, you copy the image address and insert it by URL. Um, so when you go to insert your image, you can actually say by URL and you copy and paste that website link. 
similar on a iPad, and I will actually put in a video of how to do that as well, just so we're not confused. Step number two, explain what happened in the video in basic terms. In this GIF, the girl swings a baseball bat at her brother's head, who's wearing a football helmet, and she the bat comes right back at her and hits her in the head. This GIF shows, etc. So basically just a general idea of what happened. If I can't see the GIF, I imagine I can't see the GIF, and you're just telling me generally what's going on. Then step three, notice only three steps to this. Explain what happened using scientific principles that we've been studying and our vocabulary. So this happened because, this makes sense scientifically because, this is a quote unquote fail because, um, and then try to include Newton's laws. So I have an example here. So step number one, I picked a GIF. I have this girl who is trying to ride a boogie board down a sand hill. Check. Step number one, check. Number two, explain what happened in the GIF using basic terms. So I wrote, a girl tried to slide down a sand hill and ended up being stopped and flipped over the boogie board. Right? Makes sense. If I couldn't see my GIF, be like, okay, yeah, I can picture that. And then step three, explain why it happened using our scientific principles. Um, and then we're trying to use those Newton's laws too. So why did it happen according to science? So she failed at sliding down the hill mostly because of Newton's first law. And then I explain what Newton's first law is. An object in motion will remain in motion unless acted on by an outside force. Okay? Notice I just showed you my understanding, just like you will show me your understanding. As she ran down the hill, the friction of the sand acted as an unbalanced force, meaning that one is stronger than the other, that friction slowed her down, and stopped the board, and then stopped her. She kept moving because she was still moving when the board stopped, right, that inertia, um, when the board stopped and gravity pulled her further down the hill. So I specifically looked at this part right here where her head gets stuck in the sand and she ends up flipping back over again. So instead of just staying upright like that, gravity actually pulled her further down. So all of this is probably three or four sentences, um, but on the bottom of every slide, I've given you key vocabulary. So if you're sitting here like, Miss Beale, I don't remember a lot of the vocabulary. I understand why it happened, but I don't remember the words. I have all this key vocab down here and it's on every one slide. So you have the ability to literally like, oh yeah, there's that word that we were talking about. I think it means this. I put the key vocab on there for you. Um, I would prefer if you go through and you highlight where you're showing me those science concepts. Um, that is going to make it a little easier on me to figure out where you're talking and what we're doing. So that is that. If you have any questions about these examples, please, please, please ask me. And then as you go to do your own, I know not everybody has um, as much fun spending hours looking at gifts as I have clearly put in the time here. So fail gifts for you. Um, there are a ton on this page if you are uninterested in searching for your own. Although I will say that looking at fail gifts is a pretty entertaining way to spend your time. I do have a bunch of really good options here that are all um, related to the concepts that we're studying. Sorry, I got distracted by the little kid getting hit in the head. So that being said, you are basically gonna work through steps one, two, and three tomorrow. All you're doing today is watching this video. If you have fully watched this video and you're like, cool, I got it, awesome. You are done and ready to start yours um, when the time comes. Again, this is one of those slide sets that has a slide for each person. So as you go through, find your slide. They're the same order as last time. They're alphabetical order by last name. And they all have those sentence starters and that vocabulary built in. I am looking forward to having a little bit of physics laughs with you. Um, but like I said, if you have any questions, please let me know. And yeah, good luck and have fun with it.